listening to the official podcast of FCS Fan Station with your hosts, Kyler Neal, Matthew Frazee, and Jamie Williams. FCS fans nation, Frisco, Frisco, Frisco. Hey, what do you know? I get to say this twice in a year. That's pretty neat. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the FCS fans nation podcast. One of your hosts, Matt Frazee here, Jamie Williams, Kyler Neal. We are back after a Merry Christmas, a happy holidays. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody, as we are in preparation mode. For Frisco, Texas. Admin team is ready to head down there with the Bison and the Bobcats. Holy moly, gents. We finally made it. So excited for this. Um, we have a great show for you guys. We've got awesome content and questions from our fans about the games. But before we roll into that, we would we would it would not be proper to not mention the events that occurred during the week of James Madison and NDSU involving the charities of the food bank for Fargo that the James Madison JMU sports blog put on and what our podcast was able to do for the central cast treehouse as Kyler shakes his head uh, in terms of raising combined over $20,000 for food insecurity for kids, for individuals dealing with homeless issues. Um, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this. I'm sure you guys are thinking, talk about it. I'm currently editing and putting together kind of a full four to five minute production that I'll post on YouTube to our YouTube channel. Um, just taking it through the story in terms of the week that happened, how it all occurred, the tweets and the interaction from the fans. Just wanted to say tonight on the podcast, thank you so much to everybody who donated. I mean, 15,000 plus dollars is absolute insanity over 400 donors. You guys opened your pocketbooks to help so many people. So, um, just thank you from the bottom of my heart and everybody within the Castle and community and the Fargo community. Uh, with that, because it did get to $15,000, I myself wore some purple that Jamie loved, but somebody's going to be wearing something for a long time in the form of a tattoo, Mr. Kyler Neal. And if you guys are not currently watching with us on YouTube, now would be the time to subscribe to YouTube and click on it if you're listening on Apple or something else because Kyler Neal is going to show you guys some options on our screen here about the tattoo. But I'll give you the floor before I show the images, Kyler. Uh, talk about your decision saying uh, going for that too, my, tattoo, my man. Well, before I even talk about my decision, can I just honestly say I hate kids in North Dakota. Holy <laughs> crap. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of anything from Castleton right now. Um, <laughs> you guys all suck. No, uh, guys, honestly, though, this, this was a cool thing to happen. I'm more than happy to ruin my life, potentially jump <laughs> off a cliff. Who knows? You know, this is a PG podcast, so I won't say all the different things where I can murder myself. But oh, um, so yeah, man, I, I, unfortunately, I had no faith in our community. I had no faith in the FCS fans in general. So I thought I would just make it more enticing. Maybe I thought we can raise instead of 500, 5,000, maybe something around there. So I threw out that number. Hey, let's raise 15,000 and I will scar my body for life <laughs> with the ugliest, ugliest team fan base missing teeth all of that um and unfortunately I, I gotta i gotta get a tattoo from the grizz so yeah matt i sent you like four different options right uh i'm sure you're gonna share them of they course we can just the do screen, the classic man. right we can just do the classic grizz paw print um who knows where that's gonna go if i get it i mean it looks like it would pair perfectly with my one of my cheeks on my bottom <laughs> Um, it looks like it would fit perfectly. So that's an option. This, this next one, I actually just kind of like this logo in general. It's that super one is ugly, but the reason why I'm mailing away towards this one is just because this one might just be a little bit too much money. Like I'm not trying to spend actual money to get something that I'm absolutely going to hate on my body. <laughs> so I wanted something small, really cheap, like, you know, the bare minimum a tattoo could do. And this one's actually going to require some you know, tender love and care, but I don't know. I'm still, that's still potential. Then of course you could just do the cla cra classic Grizz. This will be the cheapest. Uh, most likely it'll fit really small wherever I want it. 
Um, yeah, that one's most likely going to happen. Then you can always do these really stupid ones because the bet was go Grizz. But I think that's just super lame and I couldn't find anything and I'm not paying to have someone design something cool. So um, those are kind of the four different options I'm looking at or maybe even a hashtag go Grizz. So it could just be like a Twitter thing, hashtag go Grizz. And, you know, it doesn't have to be all cutesy. But yeah, unfortunately, this is this is this is what I got to do. Um, so it's going to be done sometimes in January. If we could do it in Frisco, awesome. But I'm not trying to go to some random one if we only have like 30 minutes, the closest one available to where you don't know where they're putting those needles. So no matter what, it's going to be done in January. Either it's going to be live streamed with you boys or my <laughs> wife. Who knows? But overall, this group's the worst thing that's ever happened in my life. <laughs> Never met anyone cool from this group. I hate everyone. I hate the fans. I'm not even an FCS fan. Um I'm going Tyler's FPS. moving up. He's FPS moving up. Fans on. Nation. We are doing FPS Fans Nation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, they, is it an FPS it. show? Yeah, this people keep FPS asking show. where Jamie's going to go when uh, they move when James Madison moves up. Well, we're all going with them. It's going FBS. No, yep. no, no. Kidding, of course. Kyler, a man of his word. Um, unbelievable. Without you, if you just really think about this, without you, my man, it doesn't even come close to that 15K. So, like, Yay. A bunch of people were willing to do a bunch of things to get this thing around 2,500, around 3,000. And it was you that pushed it beyond that. So like times five, which is crazy. Thank God. Thank yeah. God for me. <laughs> yeah, <good. laughs> Big shout out to the uh, anonymous donor who threw that $700 to get it right to 15,000. Whoever that was, bravo. We had it was somebody... actually Kelsey Neal. Huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kelsey, my, wife, my wife actually donated $10,000. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep, it Just, is what it is. It'll be fun. It is what it is. I've done dumber things in my life. Yeah, it's one of those things that will have gone to a good cause. And yep. um, very, very cool week overall. Guys, you'll get a lot more expansion. You'll get a lot more information on this as uh, I present the check here probably next week to the Central Cast Treehouse, which, of course, I'll get on film. Kyler, even if he's not getting tattooed in Frisco because of timing and specifics for us, like you said, it will happen. He'll get the video. He'll get the live stream stuff. And it'll be a lot of fun. So that being said, guys, it is time for us to talk about, oh, we got a football game too. We oh, got sure. Montana State, North Dakota State coming from up north, heading down to Texas. And with that, guys, of course, we want to start with seven of our biggest questions from our fans. And uh, let's get this thing rolling. So we are going to start, as always, with our big seven. The top seven FCS topics of the week. This is the big seven. So, FCS Topics of the Week. Well, there is only one topic, boys. Championship time. All the marbles were down to two teams, and it's Montana State, number eight seed, taking on the number two seed, North Dakota State, for all the marbles. And uh, we have some great questions. We're going to start with Mr. Zach Wilson Sr., who tosses us a question, gentlemen. Uh, he says, what has surprised you about Montana State's playoff run? Um, he also has a few questions on like key factors of the game, but Zach, just a little disclaimer here for you. That's basically going to get covered in the next few questions. So we're going to really focus on your initial sentence there. What about Montana State's playoff run um, has surprised you or made you just go wow? Because North Dakota State is one of those expected ones. I don't think anyone really thought the eighth seed was going to be there besides a few brackets that I have in the bracket challenge. And Kyler, coming from the big sky, what about it has surprised you the most? I mean, this is a team we've been talking about for like the last three years on this podcast that they're just a quarterback away. They're just a quarterback away. They're just a quarterback away, right? They have all the pieces. They have all the pieces. They just had one aspect of their game that couldn't excel them throughout these playoffs. And also a lot of times they had to get paired off with North Dakota State without that key piece. But McKay wasn't the guy. I mean, you kind of saw him struggle towards the end of the year. He really struggled versus Idaho. And then this new true freshman, touchdown Tommy, the phenom, the legend of Tommy. Um, he's kind of completely changed how this offense operates. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, for one, yes, their first game against UT Martin, that was kind of a game we all anticipated they would probably win, right? Um, most people thought if Missouri State was in there, maybe Missouri State had a good chance to beat Montana State. But Montana State, we thought, would at least win their first game and then lose to Sam Houston State. I was at that game. Uh, it was pretty impressive what Montana State was able to do. 
They were very efficient when they had the ball. They were also, their defense is elite, but they look just big, a lot bigger than what I anticipated live. Now, when you look at kind of the roster, they're not an overly big team, which is kind of weird be, because when you see them live, they definitely looked quite a bit larger than CM Houston State. And I mean, they matched up pretty size-wise with South Dakota State, who's one of the larger teams in the FCS. At least that's what it seems like. It didn't look like there was any size disparity. They they look physical. They look tough. They look like they are prepared. There's something about them that just seems like they are running the perfect type of team right now. And I think it all has to do with Tommy touchdown. People on the sidelines are excited. Yeah, I think the team is really excited whenever he's in the ball. You can see them hyped up on the sidelines, which is kind of cool. Um, so I, I think that's really the biggest thing. You see this touchdown Tommy and maybe they have found that one key missing piece that's made them not an elite team. They were still always really good. I mean, they went to the semifinals in 2019, right? And we were even in the semifinals. We're like, oh, they just don't have a quarterback. So they're not going to be able to be competitive. And- Touchdown Tommy so far has answered everything. Now it's still early. So we'll have to see if they can answer this big test. But that's what I've been really impressed with. Their poise, their exposure, their confidence and touchdown Tommy. Jamie, is it just that simple to where, I mean, I, I did the bracket challenge and very few people even had Montana State in the semis and even less remotely have them winning the actual contest unless it was like a few brackets that were, I, I would call them joke brackets almost where they just, it was two Montanas facing off and it wasn't really based in, I guess it's dumb to say logic now because they're there, but what what was it about Montana State? Is there anything besides just the quarterback we undervalued? Was, did they lose to the Grizz and did people just drop off too heavily? Was it just like, oh, they lost to the Grizz and now this team stinks when they were possibly going to be the one seed? Like, is what's up with that, Jamie? Do you think that people just lost faith too quickly? I think that's exactly what happened. I mean, obviously, when you make a change right before the playoffs at quarterback, it's a shock. And the first thing we all saw was that McKay was in the portal right before the playoffs. So everybody says, oh, no, Montana State's in trouble. Well, Brett Vegan had a plan, and the plan was touchdown Tommy. So we covered that. But the one thing um, – well, I guess there's two things. First, on the offensive side, even without Isaiah Infonse, who's one of the top backs in the country – I figured that when he was out against South Dakota State, that was going to make that offense very easy to protect and defeat for South Dakota State. And Mellett just made that happen. If if Fon stays healthy for this title game, it just puts an extra dimension. But defensively is where I really have been impressed with Montana State, especially their defensive line. And I know uh, Troy Anderson gets a lot of – publicity and credit and he should he's got 137 tackles on the year but the guy that really stood out for me over the last couple weeks has been Daniel Hardy the defensive lineman and he has just been a monster in the backfield and he he's a difference maker and he can really be disruptive and get get North Dakota State off off schedule and get them behind the sticks and force Cam to have to throw the ball I mean he's got 16 sacks and 23 tackles for loss on the year that's one guy on the defensive line. So I think that's what surprised me is the speed of the defensive line uh, led by Hardy. Yeah, it's going to be a really fun matchup versus those senior talented North Dakota State uh, All-American tackles. And then you're going to have those strong defensive ends for Montana State. That is going to be an absolute battle. Um, Can I add something to that? Because yeah, Jamie was just talking about this. I mean, of course, we played Montana firsthand. So I got to kind of see what they were able to do. This was the only team where Eastern Washington played where Montana state was so confident in their defensive line. They didn't blitz blitz us at all. They, they basically rushed us with three people only. And they said, Oh, Eric Berry, you want to try and complete a pass? We're going to drop seven back. Guess what? Try and pass, but we're still going to get to the quarterback because our three defensive linemen are elite. And Daniel Hardy is a huge reason why they are so elite. That's the only team like Montana they blitz the crap at us to try and get to Eric Barrier to make him, you know, throw off his back foot and all this stuff where Montana state was just so confident with their three defensive linemen that they're like, guess what? We don't need these crazy packages. They are going to manhandle you guys. And yeah, it was pretty impressive to see. So I do love that matchup because, you know, NDSU's O-line, the elitist of the elite, 
versus um, this young, really scrappy, really physical, really aggressive defensive line from Montana State. I, I love that matchup. That's going to be fun to watch in the trenches. It's going to be super, super interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, I think what surprised most people about Montana State um, is just the expectation change. Like, that's just really what it was. Suddenly they were, they lost to the Grizz and everyone's like, oh, eight seed, seven seed, whatever. No, no chance. And of course, that quarterback change was pretty huge. So very impressive by the Bobcats. Congratulations to them getting to Frisco. We will see if they can bring home that second title. Uh, but before they do, they're obviously going to be watching some game film. They're going to be checking some things out in North Dakota State and vice versa. But this is a really good question for Mr. Neil Woodard. Um, awesome gentleman, obviously, who uh, helped assist the firestorm of the charity. Neil asks, uh, what one or two things should each finalist team from their opponent's semifinal win? Or excuse me, what are one or two things that each team can take away from the semifinal wins uh, from each other. So looking at what North Dakota State did with James Madison, looking at what Montana State did against South Dakota State, what are these coaches and players thinking when they're looking at this film and breaking things down? Jamie, is there a key thing, obviously, for your Dukes who played against North Dakota State? Is there something Montana State should be looking at right, right now to take advantage of or to worry about? I, I think what they should worry about defensively with for themselves for against North Dakota State's offense is – it can be anybody. Against James Madison, it was Hunter Lipke. And they lost him in pass coverage three times. He caught three big passes, two of them for touchdowns, difference in the game. And if you notice to start the game, Jamie's defense played differently. They played a 4-3. We play a 4-2-5 all the time. They came out in 4-3, and Mateo Jackson flat out lost Lipke on the second drive, 7 to nothing. Now, they adjusted and went back to the 4-2-5, but Wayne Davis did lose them on the second touchdown. So I think what Montana State can learn is it can be anybody. It might be Tamaric Williams. It might be Jake Babbage this week. They find them over the middle um, trying to take advantage of Anderson's aggressiveness. Um, the, the other way, I think North Dakota State needs to be aware that, yes, Tommy Mellett wants to run the ball, but they also need to know he can throw the ball. And he's got receivers that can go get it. And they've got to be aware of the big play because if they give up a couple of big plays, that's where they could get behind the the uh, score and and, uh, and have to fight from behind, which they can do. Um, but they've got to be aware that just because he rolls out or looks like he's going to run, that he may throw the ball. And he's a he's got a good arm. He's he's thrown the ball fairly well uh, the last couple of games. So I think that's one thing I see from each side. Yeah, I remember I just listened to Coach Vegan talking actually on the Bison radio show, and he had mentioned, he made it kind of a joke. He's like, I'm losing track of the numbers of the guys that are coming in and out on offense or in terms of who I'm supposed to remember because they're just using so many people. So uh, in terms of keying in on one individual, it's, it's really tough for North Dakota State. They really, you don't really know who's going to be mostly on the game plan. Um, I also, James Madison fans and Coach Signetti said this in 2019, we need to look out for the smoke and mirrors and people who don't understand football up in Fargo took that as an insult. Like what? But that's what North Dakota state does. It is a ton of pre-step motion, tight end movement, different lineup. Suddenly the receivers going tight end moves back. And like if North Dakota state identifies that the defense has not adjusted to what they're about to do, they know they have them. So it's like, well, Montana state know to adjust and do the right things. Um, Kyler, on the flip side, my man, what is North Dakota State going to have to look for when they watch that semifinal winning against South Dakota State? What are they taking away from that? And what are they, what should they kind of start to look for from the Bobcats? I mean, you you got to look at how dominant and physical their defense is, right? There's there hasn't been one team in all of 2021 in spring and fall who was able to do what they did to Sam Houston State. There wasn't one team all spring and fall who was able to do what they did to South Dakota State, right? Even in South Dakota State's losses this year, they were still competitive. They were close. Montana State shut the door on them. They out physical them. They wore them down. Um, I think the conditioning of this Montana State team is just something that we may have not, we, we just might have not seen this in a while. Um, this The conditioning almost seems like a North Dakota State type of team this year. Um, and maybe it's just because they did take that extra season off, right? Which might have, it's not a smart thing for everyone to do. Uh, a lot of other teams that probably they want the extra prep for them with a new coach, a whole bunch of new players. Like, uh, 
this might have been a very smart thing for them to do. Learn the offense. Get bigger, right? Get bigger. Get physical. Hit the weight room instead of just running plays and learning the game. It seems like they are just a physical team who's ready to wear you down. And that's something I don't think NDSU has seen yet so far on this high-end caliber. Um, probably South Dakota State was the best option of that. And, of course, South Dakota State won that game. Um, I wouldn't anticipate South Dakota State to do that again versus North Dakota State. But this seems like a team that's going to be able to wear you down even more than South Dakota State can. They are a team that just does not give up, which is pretty impressive to watch. Um, they, they just really believe in themselves. And I don't know if a lot of teams – come into the Fargo Dome or Frisco or going to play NDSU who really believes in themselves as much as I think Montana State does right now. And I think, you know, outside of all the plays on football on the field or anything like that, I think that's something that maybe NDSU has to worry about more so than the actual football field. These guys believe in themselves. They they peaked at the right time. They took a bad loss. They learned from their mistakes and they're going, guess what? We don't want to do that again. Um, so I, th I think the mentality of this team is something that maybe NDSU hasn't faced besides James Madison and all those games are really close, right? When NDSU plays James Madison, James Madison's a team who doesn't go in there scared. They go, yeah, we can compete with these guys. We can out physical them. We can go toe to toe with them. I really think this Montana state team believes that they can do the same thing. Yeah, that's a really good takeaway. And I think a lot of that has to do with vegan in terms of them, him being their coach. Yeah. He said again on the radio show that. In the spring, they took the time for him to identify the strength and conditioning and prepare them for the fall in terms of what they weren't doing in the past, what they're going to do now. And you're talking about a coach who was born and bred from Craig Bull and was with North Dakota State, followed Craig Bull to Wyoming. And Craig Bull is huge on the strength and conditioning, the developmental stuff, and doing things the right way in a disciplined manner. So what NDSU could kind of take away from this is that you are not playing some, um, and I see this a lot, some generic big sky team. You are not playing some team who's going to fear walking into you. Vegan's going to know the routine. He's going to know how to prepare for this. And he, if you look at how many times they pass a game, how they use the quarterback run, how the defense operates, it's very much like North Dakota State. So uh, some basically the idea for North Dakota State should be if they wanted some sort of motivation is these guys think they can copy and paste and be us. And we're going to show them that they're not in Montana state's thinking uh, this, we can compete with them now. This is not the same team in the past. So it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Montana yeah. state's kind of thinking we have everything that North Dakota state has. And, you know, maybe even better with their training facilities, their um, food program and all this stuff, you know, choke a few years ago, it seems like he was building something. He said, if we want to compete with the NDSUs of the world, we need to do what they do. And they implemented it. They started raising more money. They started getting all these, um, you know, not pay for players, but you know what I mean. Um, yep. So it seems like what Choate was doing, he was building it the right way. And then you just get this other guy who he goes, oh, you already built the foundation. I'm just going to tweak it and amplify it a little bit. And that's what's happened this season. So I think, yeah, Montana State's like, why, why can't we be North Dakota State? We have everything that they have. We got amazing facilities, amazing players, even a better recruiting area, if you will, with the West Coast. It's not too far away. So, uh, yeah, I think their mentality just changed, and they're ready. Feels very much like Mike Houston taking those reins of James Madison and going, look at this stock that nobody is buying. Boy, I'm going to make this sucker blow up. Um, and when you're buying stocks or doing anything, guys, there are a lot of advantages. Of course, you can already sense my segue as I'm segueing into our third question. Thank you, Neil, for that one. Um, next question, guys, comes from Joshua Hoffman, huge fan of the page and show, South Dakota State fan. Uh, Josh says, what are the biggest advantages that the Bison have on the Bobcats and vice versa? What are the biggest advantages that the Bobcats have on the Bison? All right, guys, as you know, I'm a big fan of looking into the stats. So let me just take you down the line because I want to hear what your answer is after I drop these on you. So here we go. Total offense, NDSU is 20th, Montana State 32nd. Rushing offense, NDSU 3rd, Montana State 7th. Passing offense, NDSU 110th, Montana State 86th. Now I will disclaimer this. Here we go. Passing efficiency. How efficient is your passing game? NDSU is 8th, Montana State is 10th. Flip this to the defensive side of the ball. Total defense, NDSU is third, Montana State 13th. Scoring defense, NDSU 1, Montana State 2. 
This one's really interesting. NDSU, this is actually a record by them. Team sacks, NDSU is fourth with 49, but Montana State is 10th in the country with 44. Oh, you want it to get even trippier for you? Quarterback passes in the playoffs. Tommy touchdown, 34 of 46. He's thrown 46 passes. Cam Miller, 29 of 50. Lower completion percentage, but 50 passes. So buys and QBs throw 15 to 20 balls a game, and they use that efficiency to win games. Well, congratulations. Tommy touchdown, throwing roughly 15 passes a game, using that efficiency. So from hearing all those stats, everything that sounds the same, we've basically said the programs are starting to mirror each other. Kyler, Jamie... Uh, Jamie, outside looking in, man, what are advantages from these two teams? What what are they? Uh, I'll try to see if I can come up with a couple. What maybe see if I can come up with one tangible, one intangible. I mean, for the Bison, first off, they've been there before. They know what the the preparation looks like. The three weeks between games, staying fresh, get staying ready. Um, so I think that experience might help. But flip that to the other side. Fred Vegan's been there and done that too. So he'll have his team ready. Um, on the field, um, an advantage that NDSU has is they don't turn the ball over a lot. They turn the ball over less than one time a game. And Cam Miller's only thrown three interceptions all year. So he's been very efficient, um, which is basically the difference in the offense for North Coast State because I believe Quincy threw seven uh, in his time. So just that efficiency – Uh, And I think that actually was the wrong number, but either way, Uh, but three interceptions. And I know he doesn't throw a lot, but you, when you throw, you can't turn the ball over. So that efficiency um, is, is a big advantage. Um, I think just that defensive line being fresh for Montana state is going to be an advantage. And just the way they've just been able to be aggressive. Um, There's a blueprint that vegan brought with him from bowl from NDSU and both teams build from the inside out. You start with the lines, you get your strong lines, get your quarterbacks, your linebackers, and then then the skill positions on the outside come last. And that's basically both, you know, that's basically how they're both built. They both have talent on the outside, but their bread and butter is is the line play. And right now, the defensive line for Montana State looks to be a little bit of an advantage for them. Uh, Like Kyler said against Eastern Washington, they're they're confident. They're going to rush four drops seven. And... Troy Anderson's all over the field, so he'll be in run support. Um, it'll be interesting to see if North Dakota State tries to roll with Lupke like the against JMU, or if they think Tamir uh, Williams can get um, a little bit um, on the outside, maybe pick up some yards there. So that there's a couple things I would look at. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who wins those battles. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in the quarterback play in terms of, I think, if you want to do an advantage. NDSU's very young, fresh new QB has started since – South Dakota State. And then he, he started about a half or he was in a half before that. So he's had a lot of time to really be the starter. And I know everyone's like, well, Tommy Touchdown has just been elite and great. He has and all the praise in the world. But the lights will be on in Frisco. I mean, this is brand new lights on. I mean, both crowds full throat for all marbles. And maybe he doesn't get rattled, but I would say that's a slight advantage where Cam Miller at least has been at the helm for more than 12 quarters. I would say the advantage on the flip side for the quarterback for Montana State is um, NDSU, if you're going to beat them, it requires dual quarterback. I'm sorry. It just it really does. If you, if they can key in on more of the statue or just a pure runner who can't throw, it's so easy for them to game plan. And Tommy Touchdown gives them that dual concept. So we will see in the game that give North Dakota State fits for sure. Um, Kyler, any advantages you see on one side or the other between these squads? Yeah, I mean, the main thing for, like, on the NDSU side, what's an advantage for them? And Jamie kind of already alluded to this in the beginning of the podcast. You don't know what they're going to do. They, they kind of remind me of the Patriots when Patriots was on this dominant run, not just because of, you know, Tom Brady, but it's because in any given day, you could have Rex Burkhead going out for 200 yards, three touchdowns, and you're like, what the hell? Then they have a fullback next week who's the same thing. Then they have this random wide receiver you've never even heard of. He's end up being the next big playmaker the next week. You don't know what NDSU does, and they have enough pieces in enough places to where that can happen in any specific game. They don't need to rely on the quarterback. They don't need to rely on the running back. They don't need to rely on their wide receivers. You don't know what they're going to do, and they, they're so good across the board. I don't even think they're elite across the board, but they're so good in every single spot, right? 
where other teams, you're an elite in one position, you're an elite in one other position, and then you're somewhat mediocre. NDSU doesn't have a weakness on any side of the ball. I just don't see it. Any offensive position, they don't have a weakness. They may not be the best in the best, but they don't have a weakness, which means how the hell do you prep for them? Um, because you just don't know who's going to go off. Um, and then on the other side of the ball, the biggest advantage, I mean, Montana State has had all the pieces. I don't know how many more times we have to keep saying it. They've had all the pieces for years. They've been missing one single piece. And right now there's so much hype behind this kid, this Tommy touchdown kid, Tommy Malott. He seems like he could potentially be the real deal. Montana State's defense, they're not going to be afraid of going against NDSU's offense. I just don't think they are. I think they've already played some elite offenses and they were able to shut them down with Sam Houston, with South Dakota State, with Eastern Washington. I mean, they shut all three of them down um, to where they couldn't do anything. Offensively, if Tommy Mallott doesn't get rattled, pretty good chance that they're going to feel really confident. If they can stop NDSU on a few plays and get into field goal position, I think the longer that that happens, the more confident this team becomes, and they seem like they're a team built around hype. Now, if you shut them down in the beginning, like what Idaho actually did, which is weird, weird game. Now, every team has one of these games every season, so maybe we shouldn't look too much into this. North Dakota State's had this with Youngstown in the past. I mean, every single year, one of these games happened, and it just happened against Idaho, where Idaho rattled them in the beginning, and there were just was not enough confidence not enough tenacity to lead them through and really start to dominate in the second half. So if you can get to Montana State and get to them early, especially with a brand new freshman quarterback who's been stellar, there's potentially some mistakes that could be made. And I think that's the biggest advantage for NDSU, force Montana State into mistakes. Yeah, that will be interesting. The first quarter is going to be massive. Like, honestly, what, you know, if Set Montana, the tempo. Yeah, if Montana State is up 10-3, you're like, okay, here we go. NDSU now is kind of on their heels a little bit. You know, this is throwing them off. But what if it's, I don't know, even if it's 7 nothing NDSU after the first quarter, does everybody think, okay, NDSU's in the script. They're in, you know, and it doesn't mean the ball game's over, but you're just going to be thinking, all right, the Bison are they're high five and thinking, yes, this is what we want. We're right where we want to be. So that's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out for sure. Uh, Kyler, you've hit this quite a bit, um, but I, you know, just maybe some reemphasis or any other facts you may have about this. Mr. Joe Morgan wants to know what are the main differences between the teams compared to when they last played in the 2019 semifinal. Um, your unbiased buys and admin can obviously say the super simple ones, which is Trey Lance is not there, which is pretty huge. It's a pretty massive factor. Um, but what will be interesting about this is this is a good time to bring it up is Christian Watson because Christian Watson ate on Montana State last time and it's a different team. It's a better defense, but he just looked like a different caliber of player against them. And Christian Watson has not played in any playoff games. He warmed up in full uniform prior to the semi, but they pulled him out. Um, so the question will be, will he play in the national championship to which Enz has said we will have Christian post press conference of james madison he said they'll have him so uh is that just coach speak we'll see hamstrings can last a while but almost seven weeks off that thing you would like to think he'd be okay but we'll have to see so i would say a big difference there is you've got some big playmakers that are there that are not but montana state kyler is it as simple as now the quarterback's there a pretty cool coach and i mean a different different mentality of the program no i think their defense is definitely much better they seem to be bigger they seem to be stronger they seem to be faster um, they seem to have all the right pieces in place. And I, I do think for that team specifically, this off season was probably it benefited them. And I don't think it would have benefited most teams the way it did Montana state. Um, they hit the weight room. They got bullied last time they played North Dakota state. Now they're not getting bullied by really anyone. Um, and that's kind of the big difference. Now, what I do see when I see these two teams, I don't think NDSU was as elite as they were in 2019, right? Trey Lance, big difference maker where Montana State, I think, is a lot better than they were in 2019. So when you have a team that gets a little bit weaker, who is so elite compared to everyone else, you have another team who is missing a piece and they're getting quite a bit better. Now they're going to meet more towards the middle. So I think these two teams are a little closer comparable. Um, but I mean, these are still two stellar teams. There's a reason why they're in the playoffs. I mean, you already said this earlier in the game or in the podcast, Matt. Montana State was a really bad half away from being really the number one seed overall. Um, North Dakota state. A lot of people said maybe even they should have been the number one seed because of their strength of schedule. 
I mean, these are two teams. All their losses were bad losses to their rival. Um, and that was it. They've kind of dominated everyone else besides a few hiccup games to where they didn't dominate, but they still won. Yeah. I mean, I think just the gaps closed a little bit and that's just the, the biggest difference between the two teams. Yeah. A big thing too, is that NDSU team, um, in 2019, obviously a lot of different talents, a lot more, um, senior, you know, actually not that many more seniors than they have now. So I will say that is a comparable thing is that NDSU with 13 seniors graduating this year. Um, so you are going to have another cast coming back next year. So again, it is kind of a younger team, which is interesting. Um, Jamie, I want to bounce this to you, my man. Cody Werlinger wants to know, will the Bison going back to Frisco for a ninth trip be an advantage knowing the routine? Will Vegan knowing the routine help the Bobcats? Now, you mentioned this earlier that this could be kind of a difference maker, but you've seen James Madison go down there. They've been on multiple trips. You know how big preparation is. You know how teams prepare. Um, does that do the Bobcat players, just because the coach knows, does that give them that same edge as NDSU? even 20 25 percent or how do you feel about that i think it definitely closes the gap that vegan has been there and done that now it's been a while because i believe he left with bowl you said right yes sir 2013 so, they he left with them after that championship so so there's a little bit of distance there but vegan's been there and done that so i think it closes the gap a little bit but i think vegan will remind his team and maybe have his team ready for some of these trick plays and it's not necessarily the smoke and mirrors like we talked about a little while ago with the motion and the different looks but it's the trick plays it's it's the fake field goal it's the end around type of stuff i mean vegan should hopefully have them ready for that kind of stuff and maybe he's going to have a little bit of that in his back pocket because Mellet's such an athlete that he's seen he can catch the ball he can throw the ball he can run the ball so he's versatile and you know they didn't match up well last time uh in 2019 but this is certainly two different teams uh ndsu i believe they have two players that caught a pass in that game that are going to be active in this game if christian watson plays the other being josh babich um you know you had guys like adam cofield who made an impact who aren't there this this time around and Montana State didn't have a tackle for loss or a sack because Trey Lance was so efficient because they had such a smart game plan. And they're going to have a smart game plan. Ince will have that team ready to go. It's going to be a great you know, chess match, I think. Um, so I think the gap is closed, but I definitely think that the been there, done that for the coaching staff um, will be a little bit of an advantage, but the gap closed a little bit because Vegan has been part of that in the past. Yeah, temp, uh, knowing where you're at is definitely important. I'm going to roll this actually right into our next question. Don't want to over uh, go past you too quickly, Cody, but I think we've we've covered that quite a bit in terms of the preparation and things. But in terms of prep, maybe we'll expand on your question a bit from Mr. Ryan Thornburg and Garth Raschenberger, awesome listeners of the podcast. This question intrigues me so much. I'm very interested to hear your guys' takes. Um, which team gains more by having three weeks off? Will that give NDSU time to figure out Tommy touchdown or will allow time for the Bobcats to add more to the playbook. I am so intrigued by this. If, if let the, this would be the bias buys an admin probably is what it's going to sound like, but I feel like NDSU gets a little bit of an edge with more time. Like Montana state almost was running so hot with this fresh new individual. It looks like South Dakota state didn't really know what to prep for with him. Like they knew he was good, but like, what are those eight quarters? They st- that they had, like, what could they really prep for besides just kind of maybe playing their game? Like how much is NDSU going to use safeties or corners on these 50, 50 balls? And what do you do against the QB run a single spy? Or do you have edge rushers or corner blitzers? Like, what are you going to do with tendencies? I think that time separation is a big advantage for NDSU because Montana state was just on fire. And now you're almost getting so much time to kind of evaluate and put together a game plan. Am I off on that, Kyler? Both of your opinions, I can't wait to hear this in terms of this time because the chess match between the coaches is probably what's going to determine this sucker. you got to execute, but the chess match and the game plan is going to be very intriguing. Uh, Kyler, what do you think? Oh, I think NDSU definitely has the advantage with three weeks off. Um, One of the things, momentum is a big key factor in football. I don't think anyone played the better playoffs this season so far than Montana State. 
I, I just think they played the absolute best. Momentum's huge. Then kind of what you were saying. All these teams, they didn't know what to prep for when they have this Tommy Malott kid. This is a true dual threat by the means. Normally when we say dual threat, it's someone who leans on the passing side but can still run it, or vice versa, someone who leans on the rushing side but can still pass it. When you look at this kid's stats, it is almost 50-50 across the board, four, over 400 yards passing, over 400 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns, no turnovers. I mean, and that's just in the playoffs versus the elite of the elite. I think he was riding, riding a momentum wave. People didn't know what to do when they saw him. You didn't know because there wasn't enough game film, and you only have a few days to prep because it's also traveling with the playoffs, right? Um, the games are happening on Saturday. You got to get ready for a Friday or whatever. It makes it pretty tough, especially then you lose a Fonze. Now you don't know what their whole game plan is going to be. Now you're going to have three weeks. And like I already said a, a few questions earlier, I you just don't know what to do with North Dakota State because they're so good across the board. You can prep for one thing, and then all of a sudden something smacks you in the mouth, and you're like, we've never even heard of this kid. How the hell is he having 100 yards and two touchdowns right now? Just because you don't know what to prep for. After watching this playoff run, you know what to prep for. It's their X factor with Tommy Malott. Um, I, yeah, I think having three weeks definitely gives a better advantage to NDSU over um, Montana State just because of all those things I just said. And Jamie, do you think, um, does that, like, are there going to be added wrinkles though? Does Montana State now almost feel like you get a winter camp is what NDSU always tags it when they're prepping for Frisco. Do they have a winter camp now to implement more with Tommy or do you think Vegan and the coaching staff is just confident what they're doing and they're going to let this kid sling it and play it and and work within the offense that they've used so efficiently. Well, I think every single thing Kyler said is 100% correct. And I do think it does kind of lean NDSU for who gains more, but it does gain Tommy Malott three weeks of practice. He didn't run with the ones until playoff week. So that's been kind of vanilla for him. I mean, they've put third some wrinkles and you kind of wash between Christian Watson being back and Isaiah Infonse being back. But I think Infonse being back with Mellet in that backfield will give the Bobcats a little bit more flexibility to open the playbook more. Um, and I would imagine Infonse is going to be healthy because I know he's been playing nicked for at least half the year. And he still had 100 yards on Sam Houston. So Jamie, three more um, weeks, you know. Let me, <laughs> yeah. No, no, let me interject on you a bit just to, to help you out. Please continue on the stop, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give this to you. I looked it up with Tommy touchdown and his rushing um, against UT Martin. It was 23 carries for Mellet and 28 for Afonze. Um, against Sam Houston, 24 carries for Tommy touchdown and 17 for Afonze. So you're looking at yeah, there's a little bit of a difference, but mostly between four or five carries difference. Then Afonze is out for South Dakota State. 34 carries for Tommy touchdown. Six for Elijah Elliott, nobody else rushed. So his injury and his ability to be in and be effective is massive, massive for Montana State, just as massive as Christian Watson will be for how he works in the running game and how he stretches the field for North Dakota State. So I would just want to give you those stats to continue yeah, your those, point, which is phenomenal. I mean, that that makes the point, really, of having a Fonse. And really, you can kind of run on North Dakota State a little bit more than you think you can. Um, because JMU really didn't have a great run game all year, and they ran well the last two games. I thought Latrell Palmer ran really well against North Dakota State uh, in spurts, um, especially in the second half once they really got it going. And Fonse is a better back than Palmer at this point in their careers. I mean, I'm not, obviously, it's still in North Dakota State. They'll still be ready to play, but those are some things that I see from the Montana State side that would give them a little bit of a an advantage on their side over three weeks. It's going to be so much fun to see what these coaches and teams come up with. Yeah. It's really going to be great. One thing that is pretty interesting is because that three extra weeks, this doubled Tommy Malott's time, <laughs> like as, as a starter, right? He's <laughs> no, only played really three is. weeks. He's only prepped yep. three weeks with the, with the one roster, like um, what Jamie was just saying. Now he's just doubled it. So you would think there's going to be more plays um, that maybe he's going to run. That's going to change things up. But also at the same time, as a freshman, and I don't mean this to ding any freshman because, you know, we've seen great ones like a Trey Lance and this kid already. I mean, freshmen sometimes are immediate impact players and they can change the game because of how talented they are. But how much are you going to learn in three weeks to completely change a playbook? 
uh, with a new quarterback that is a freshman, I think you just lean towards the, guess what? This is what you've been successful at. I'm not trying to throw more things at you. Make your few reads. If you don't see those reads in a few seconds against a North Dakota State team, run to the outside, try and get yards. I mean, I, I don't think the game plan is going to change too much because I don't think you want to overwhelm a kid to, when he's a freshman too. Yeah, I definitely went psychotic with uh, doing some prep for this podcast and just doing the breakdown of Tommy Touchdown's passes. There wasn't a single pass completed where it was a second read. It was take the take the look, move the head, throw to the receiver, which honestly emulates a lot of what like, Trey Lance looked like early on in his career. And then it was just like, go and run if you can't do it. It's just that, Trey Lance has three out of conference games, his first three starts <laughs> against Drake and others. And this will be a four start against um, North Dakota state. So it will be interesting. He's a very talented player. So I'm very excited to see him live. It'll be fun to see that chess match with the defense. I mean, and, Sam Houston state and South Dakota state's not that much different from Drake after you see the games. Oh yeah. Totally the same. hundred percent. Ouch. Boom, baby. <laughs> Boom. He's dropping bombs. Yep. Kyler's like, I'm getting tattoos. I don't care. I'm saying whatever I want. Which is good. Uh, guys, last question here of the Big Seven before we have some really fun, fun, quick hit questions. Uh, Roger Fisher, just to kind of wrap it up, guys, with this matchup, what is the most important strength and weakness of each team? Who can capitalize on those? And what are key factors to that? Uh, Roger, I'd, I'd love to throw something in here before I let Jamie and Kyler speak. Uh, it seems like such a cop out, but man, that quarterback play within those 15 to 20 passes, it's so similar. It's so efficient. It's so equal. But who's going to go eight for 20? Who's going to go 12 for 17? And who's going to have the touchdown to an interception? I think that what those quarterbacks do in literally how long is a pass? Four seconds. So four times 15 in those 60 seconds of that ball moving through the air. That is going to be such an important factor in terms of capitalizing on those moments with those passes. And if you wanted strength or weakness, I would say it's a weakness. Like the passing game, if you just look at the statistics of these teams, it is a weakness. However, it has been a lot better because a lot of their ranking within the passing offense is pre-Tommy touchdown. Uh, Cam, Cam Miller, Quincy Patterson, it was Quincy Patterson for half the season. It's been more efficient with Cam Miller. So it's hard to judge just purely off stats, but that is going to be super, super fun to watch. Jamie, do you have a strength or a weakness of one of the teams and – an ability to capitalize on them. Yeah, I think the the strength on, of both teams is the lines, both sides of the ball. So, which team can put the other behind the chains? Who can f get the other offense off schedule? Who can get you in third and eight, third and twelve? And then when you're in a third and eight, third and twelve, can you pick that up? And that's going to be a key to me because third and three. If you give these both of these teams third and three, they're probably moving the chains. So if you can get third and longs, a lot of third and longs forced then you're probably in good shape. But on the flip side, if you can start picking up those third and longs, then you're also in good shape. So th I think that part of the the working with the line play and, and tackles for loss, I think that's going to be big because, as you saw in 2019, Montana State had none, and NDSU just marched down the field every time. Uh, I don't see that happening this time. Uh, so that's going to be the cat and mouse that I'm looking for. It is going to be so much fun. Kyler, what do you think, man? Any final thoughts before the quick hits? I think the biggest strength and weaknesses are just they haven't faced teams like this before. Um, I mean, I think this is by far going to be the most elite defense Montana State's figure, or faced all year, by far. On the flip side, I also think this is going to be the most elite defense North Dakota State's seen all year. So you have these two really young quarterbacks. One, Cam Miller, a little bit more experienced, but he's still a very young quarterback. And then you have this Tommy Malott kid. I think the weakness is the quarterbacks, even though they are so good and we keep praising them on how efficient they are, how they're playing. But when you're going with these matchups, these are the two weaknesses. They haven't faced defenses like this. You would say maybe you and I is the closest thing to a Montana state that North Dakota states face. But I think Montana state's defense is on a different level than Northern Iowa. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's, crazy enough to say and that just shows you how elite these two teams have been at least the last four weeks five weeks because when the weakness is the two players that everyone's praising is it really weakness i have no clue but yeah playing against those two defenses and not getting rattled not getting rattled keeping your exposure can they do that i'm not sure 
We've never seen Cam Miller really in a place where he was down big and had to come up or even down at all since he took over from Quincy. It's kind of been uphill sailing from him. Um, we've never seen Tom Mallott down even in a game. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see which of these quarterbacks can keep their composure because the strengths are on the defensive side of the ball. The strengths are everywhere for these two teams and their balance. The defense or the weaknesses only. We don't know what these two kids can do if they're rattled. Yeah, I would definitely have to say if if North Dakota State, they definitely are going to have to get some playmakers from other receivers as well. They had some young guys drop some passes throughout the playoffs, including against James Madison. You know, if Christian Watson's not there, who who are your people besides running backs coming out of the backfield and tight ends over the middle? So that would de- definitely be something Montana State can capitalize on if you can force like nobody else to be able to catch the ball. And then I'm not downplaying Montana State's rush defense, but there there were a lot of opportunities within the rushing game and some passing game where South Dakota State did move the ball. You know, that did get 17-17. So there were opportunities there. It wasn't like it was complete shutdown, cut it off, you know, take out South Dakota State all completely. So I think Montana State definitely is going to have to be um, able to stop NDSU in their rushing game, whether it's Quincy Patterson coming in in packages and all those rotations. I know they have a good run defense, but North Dakota State, that run team, they they really bring a different monster when it comes to the rushing game. Um, I mean, we saw what happened with James Madison, who's an excellent rush defense as well. So, um, all right, boys, I think that kind of covers everything for the main topics. Let's get into these fun ones with the quick hits. Just because your question is answered quickly doesn't mean we don't care. These are the quick hit questions of the week. All right, gentlemen, quick hit questions. Uh, Hank Kutzelman and Matt Bernhardt. Matt, congratulations to your Bobcats. I believe you're a big Bobcats fan. Hope we see you down there in Frisco, my man. Also, your first name is awesome. Um, he, They both basically have questions about COVID protocols and would they cancel this game? Would they crowd a national championship if something happens? Uh, just open form here, guys. Has anybody heard anything on this? I think normal testing protocols are going. Players could get knocked out if... You know, they test positive and stuff, but I haven't really seen any negatives and stuff, right? Well, the the one rule, if this happens where a team gets broken out with COVID, they look at the records of the teams and who they face, and they face common opponents, and that's who's your national championship. So, you know, North Dakota State lost to South Dakota State. Yeah, they bum Drake of a program, and Montana State handled them. So that's your national championship. <laughs> hey, call it. I have no clue. <laughs> I, I was getting ner- nervous there. I was like, wait, is that real? I was like, oh, no. No, <laughs> I have no good. clue what they do. Let's just hope everyone is taking the proper protocols to make this game happen. Yeah, I, w- I would like to think that both those coaches brought teams in and goes, listen, regardless of what you think about current events or anything like this, there's never been a time now to do everything as safe as possible for 12 days. I mean, or whatever the time frame is right and now. It's, and it's so easy to isolate yourself in those two States, right? There's 12 people <laughs> total that are not on the football team. Like just find one open field, build a hut. You're fine. Oh, that is, that is too good. Uh, Jamie, Mr. Paul Emerson, who Paul keeps messaging me, giving me crap about all the Duke's gear that I wore for a good cause, Paul, for a good cause. Uh, do the cats load nine in the box to have a chance versus Lukey? Man, are they just going to stack them up, Jamie? What do you think? Yeah, I, mean, I know it's, it's good that you came to me on this question because I know I'm Paul's favorite on the entire page. Um, <laughs> you know, he, he really likes things that I say and whatnot, especially my Jamie fandom. But no, they don't. Um, they, they don't load nine in the box. They, they use their front four. They use Troy Anderson, and they'll have a game plan for the run game. Um, we'll see how effective it is and if they have to adjust, but I think that's at least how they're going to start the game. Should be fun to see. Uh, Jamie, right back to you, man, because um, you remember some of those awesome spots we hit last year. Brandon Anderson wants to know, what Frisco area restaurants would you recommend eating at, my man? Uh, Well, I wouldn't recommend the steakhouse that we tried to go to. um, So that one's out. But we did wind up at Hutchins Barbecue in Frisco, which was absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. Um, If you want to go a little further out, uh, I'm a smokehouse guy. Um, Lockhart's in Dallas is great. Uh, but also go downtown Dallas. There's plenty of restaurants there. I went to a good Mexican restaurant downtown Dallas five years ago, so I don't remember the name. Um, but I mean, I mean, come on, just find a smokehouse, find a steakhouse. It's Texas food; you can't go wrong. Hmm. Rodeo it's- goat, gotta go to Rodeo Goat if you have time and you're in Dallas. 
rodeo gout in dallas oh my goodness i can't wait to get the food down there guys i can't wait for it to be above zero degrees that'll be fun um hey mr neil uh we don't shy away from buying people beers who are around us at the actual title game even if it's our team winning or losing lacey miller wants to know what fan base can drink more beer oh my goodness here we go montana versus ndsu i gotta ask this question first before we go forward maybe i'm generically off on this kyler and jamie correct me if i'm wrong is Bozeman generic what people think of Montana of like farmer Montana folks who like just chug bush light like North Dakotans or is it like craft beer IPA kind of Boise Idaho ish what is it what is it because I would go to NDSU if it's that way yeah I don't think either of them drink as much as they think they do um <laughs> but no it Mon- when you think of Montana none of the cities are Montana anymore. Um, like when you just have this vision in your head of what Montana is, cause you watch Yellowstone. No. <laughs> um, Bozeman is yeah. very um, gentrified in terms of they're all craft beer. It's like Portland without being too Portland. Um, <laughs> you know? Portland, I'll, like, I'll, Portland. I'll say that it is like a good balance of Portland with a little bit of Montana. Um, yeah, all those towns, they're college towns, they're, you know, liberal arts towns. It's not what you would envision Montana to be. But at the same time, yes, North Dakota State can drink their Bush Light. That's like 3%. <laughs> Everyone on the West Coast will drink craft beer. So you still, you North Dakotans have to drink three beers to compete with Bozeman. Even though at the same time, I've heard, and I don't know if it's true. I heard White Claw is like the Bozeman drink of choice. So who knows? All I know is these two fan bases they both have a good time. I don't know. Neither of them are Wisconsin, right? Wisconsin is just a beast of its own. Um, I'll, I'll give the drinking capital to Wisconsin, not Montana or North Dakota State. But I think they're going to be pretty evenly matched. But North Dakota State is by far going to have the better rigs. Yeah, that's uh, North Dakota State definitely brings the tailgate rigs. But Lacey, in terms of drinking beers, the teams on the field, the coaching staff, and how many fans are going to be in there, it's probably 50-50, which makes this an absolute epic time as a North Dakota State fan I can't wait to be with you Bobcat fans it's gonna be so much fun win lose or draw it's gonna be great so uh hey well if you guys are watching on YouTube make sure you click subscribe raise your hand if you're excited to drink with the Rev says Dustin Hilton oh man all hands are up on this podcast Rev we can't wait to see you my man One wait of the wait best hold guys. on he's, he's paying right oh absolutely yeah I'll type oh, that in your okay head. then, then yeah, will, yeah yeah I will be paying Dustin. Yeah, it's right here in the question. Uh, no, we can't wait to see you, Rev. It's going to be a great time down in your home state of Texas. Hey, Lacey, I'll respond to this one. You had a second question here. Will the Montana State fans traveling without tickets be able to get tickets and get into the game? I almost guarantee it. I, I mean, message me if I'm wrong, but the scalpers get really nervous Start starting next Tuesday, Wednesday. You will see those ticket prices plummet. On top of that, Sam Herter just tweeted out today, sounds like they are willing to release 1,500 standing room only tickets um, starting on January 3rd. So those fans, it's it's not a bad view. When it says standing room, like you're just right above the last row. Like you're not in a corner and you're not secluded. You're literally front row. You're just standing. Like that's it. So you're going to be able to find a ticket, Lacey. I almost promise you. So uh, she and others are making the trip down there without tickets because they're so expensive now. Just be patient. You'll be okay. And definitely don't don't circ on the um that um standing room. That's that like Matt said, that's not a bad look. It's 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 not a you know, miles away, can barely see. You you can get some good sight lines if you get the right spot. So yeah. Just, yeah, it's worse. Get, just get in the stadium. Absolutely. In, in worst case scenario, if it, for somehow it, it doesn't happen where you're able to get in, there's sports bars right nearby. You can still tailgate, you can still experience it. The whole atmosphere the day of before and after the game i mean it's super fun so yeah go down there and we all think you should be able to get tickets even when like the james madison games were sold out there was tons of tickets left that same day you know people will resell them they were holding on to them they're going oh now i don't know what to do so you should be able to but at the same time i also wouldn't bank on it like 100 going i can 100 do it no matter what just go down there expect to be um, just having a good time in the tailgate lot. Don't anticipate you're 100% going to get tickets because then you, you'll you get a little bummed and you won't get to experience the same thing. So just w- w- hope for the best, wish for the worst, or not wish for the worst, prep for the worst. Um, but we think you should. 
Kyler's the doctor who gives you the hard news right away. And Matt's the doctor who goes, it'll be fine. It's just surgery. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes for you guys. And if anything goes wrong, uh, blame Kyler. Message him. So, okay. So Edward Larson, guys, great question here. Bobcats have scored a touchdown in every quarter of this playoff except one. Which team has the most consistent offense? Ooh, this is very, very interesting. Um, Kyler, what do you think, man? Who has the more consistent offense? That's kind of a tough question. Across the season, North Dakota State. The last three games, Montana State. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I really don't know. You have one team who has played probably the best overall season in the FCS versus one team who has played the best in the playoffs when they started this new quarterback and it's completely changed their offensive firepower. I don't know. I really don't. That's that's how I'm going to answer that question. Cop out. I don't know. Why'd you ask me? Ask Jamie. He knows people by name. <laughs> There's going to be so many things we don't know, but we're going to find out here real soon, guys. Recording on a Wednesday night, and we will see you uh, very soon. Braddy Bredall uh, wants to know, was Sam Houston overrated? And if so, because COVID-19 spring variables worked in their favor. Uh, as If you're watching on YouTube, we're all shaking our heads no. Uh, Brady, just got to say, We've been big proponents of that Sam Houston was not overrated in the spring for sure. Um, regardless of who they lost because of the spring or like the short season or their schedules or whatever, they beat James Madison, North Dakota State, and South Dakota State in the playoffs. And it, it, I don't care if it's last second touchdown or whatever. That is just an insane, insanely impressive. If you want to say overrated, you could say overseeded this year in the fall. You could say they should have been the three or four seed, five, whatever you want to put them at. Uh, clearly, they weren't the one seed after what had happened against Montana State. But the committee is not perfect. But in the spring, there's nothing that should be taken away from Sam Houston. Really aren't going to find much of that yeah, on this I'm podcast. I'm kind of getting a little tired of the pot shots of Sam Houston. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, they went 10-1 and one this season, whatever it was, 11-1. and one, And they, they played their playoff games just the same way they played every other one, just down to the wire, and Montana State whooped them. But no, no, let's get off of that. Sam Houston was a rightful champion in the spring. I believe if you go back to our first podcast, I said I thought they were going to lose in the quarterfinals this year. I happen to be right. But that doesn't mean anything or take anything away from what they did or what they accomplished. Bury that stupid rhetoric. I'm tired of it. <laughs> and, Jamie. and they lost to a team who was really on pace to be a one seed. This might have yeah. been the best eight seed in the history of this whole postseason, right? Um, just like South Dakota State may have been the best non-ranked seeded team in this postseason just because they had a few flute games with injuries and whatnot. Um, yeah, Montana State, everyone prior to that last week against their rival was projecting Montana State to be an easy shoe-in for the semifinals for the national title. They were an easy shoe-in to have a number one seed. They just had a fubbed up game. Um, I, I left out the CK because I want to keep this PG. So I said fubbed. <laughs> um, I don't even know if that's a word, but yeah, it, it is, is now. now. It is yeah. now. And guess what? We don't have to talk about Sam Houston State ever again. They're gone. You don't have to bash them anymore. They're gone. Even so though they what? have. Give them props. Even though if even though they have the second best resume for playoffs in the last 10 years in the FCS. Easily. Yeah, I might over argue James that. Madison. I might over argue others. that. You I would argue, argue but you would lose. I don't yeah. know that I would. <laughs> we are going to argue and debate I don't know it. that I would over 10 years. Oh, we're going to argue and debate it in Frisco at the bar, we Jamie. Will. I can't wait. Uh, last few on here, guys, for our quick hit questions. Would you rather eat Bobcat or Bison, Elijah Pierre asked. Ooh, what a question. I'm superstitious, Elijah. I've never ate, ate Bison. I know Bison burgers are super popular. They're I know they're really good, but I've never done it. And I don't think I ever will. I'm just like, it. it I, I just can't do it. So you're gonna eat a house cat? What a jerk! Oh, I can't eat. I can't eat my the own animal. I can't do it. Oh my goodness! I'm a dog guy. I'll be okay. And bobcats, wow. they're they're wow. like saber tooth tigers, man. Like you could eat that back in the day, right? Wow. <laughs> I guess <laughs> a bobcat is saber tooth tiger. Jeez, that's a stretch. They're almost like a bear cat. If that's yeah, a thing. A bear cat. I think those things are real. Um, so quick vote. I would eat the Bobcat, Elijah, Kyler, Bobcat, or Bison. Um, let's do a layer because we're going to make this in a burger. We're going to do Bison, Bacon, Bobcat. I'll try it all. I don't care. Ooh. I'll eat monkey. I don't care. The three Bs. Jamie, 
What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I try them both, but I bet you Bison's better. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. Uh, and we'll see them be better next Saturday. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, I had to do it. There you go. Yes. There you go. You were setting me up. Last question here, guys, in the quick hit questions. Um, this is uh, Joe Gass, Ben Schlager, and Alex Peterson. Um, guys, I'm giving you guys shout outs because you ask questions. Please, please, please ask your questions uh, for our finale podcast after Frisco because your questions were great. They were awesome about NFL prospects. They were great about Jamie's future support of the FCS, about the entire year overall, spring to fall. But those are great questions just after the championship when we have the overall picture in view. So literally copy and paste, put them on the next post. But Joe, Ben, and Alex, thank you so much for putting something on the page, of course. So uh, that being said, guys, that brings us to the end of all of our questions for our championship edition here. So it's time to predict one last game. Are these predictions because we're smart, because we're dumb, or because we're biased? It may be a combination of all three. Welcome to the playoff prediction segment. And we, uh, Brandon Owens, don't think we forgot about you, Miss Year from Cocky Nation, Jacksonville State. His question was, wish I could go this year, guys. We'll miss you, Brandon. You were great thing out with last year. We hope to see you in future years. He says, but I definitely will be going next year. How close do you think this game will be, if close at all? And the reason I brought your question up, Brandon, is because now we are in our prediction segment, 12 and 2, uh, number 8, Montana State versus 13 and 1, number 2, North Dakota State, the Seeds. Time for some predictions. Okay, well, I think I have to start these predictions out with Mr. Williams because Kyler at least comes from Big Sky Country and then myself, obviously, a Bison fan. So, Jamie, the furthest out looking in, give us your overall take on the game and give us your prediction, my man. Well, I don't think we're looking at a blowout here. I think right now the line is North Dakota State minus eight. I don't think it's that big. But I am not a fool. Um, I believe the Bison have been in Frisco eight times. And Matt, how many times have they lost? Um, that would be zero, my friend. Okay, so because of that, I'm going to play the odds and say North Dakota State boringly, stupidly, annoyingly wins again. <laughs> 27 to 23. And we'll just storm the field with Matt, take a picture in the middle, and... It is what it is, but the Bison are bringing home another damn trophy. Yes, just uh, just a disclaimer here, guys, as FCS Fans Nation people. Even if my Bison lose, I'm not going to storm with Montana State, but I will. we will slowly make our way down there as whatever winning team is done with confetti. And the announcer says, thank you for attending. And we're going to take a picture of our crew there on the Frisco field. We feel like that's important. So uh, if you're a Bobcat fan, just shake my hand. I'm not coming down to celebrate with you if you win, but I will give you kudos, of course. All right, Jamie has the bison. Kyler, what do you think, my man? Prediction time. Well, this, you know, we just talked about NDSU's championship record and how they're undefeated. So is Montana State. 1-0, baby. Um, get ready to see a lot of this in the future where it is the big sky of Missouri Valley going toe-to-toe or the Missouri Valley versus the Missouri Valley. Since Jamie's gone, he thinks we all suck. Since Sam houston has gone, they think we all suck. This is going to be the northern show. Um, the big sky and Missouri Valley are definitely going to run things. I just think it's going to happen. So we're going to see this matchup probably a few times in the next decade. I'm going to lean towards North Dakota state. I just think they have too many intangibles. You don't know who to prep for. Yes. Tommy Malat, touchdown, Tommy, whatever you want to call him, this young phenom. He has played absolutely spectacular. He's probably going to have some big plays. I don't think he's going to be able to do the exact same thing. He was able to do the last three weeks. North Dakota State is a different beast, but I think it's going to be a a closer game. It's going to feel closer than what the score shows. Almost like that 2018 Eastern NDSU game to where you're like, okay, it was a 14-point game at the end, but with a few minutes left, you were kind of still nervous that Eastern could still potentially catch up and you know win. I think it's going to be that type of a game. I'm going to take NDSU on the over. Give me a 27 to 17 type of game very very interesting two for the bison so disclaimer before my pick i do not always choose north dakota state um in 2017 i picked james madison to upset them in frisco i to this day believe that that game was an upset if you play it 10 times james madison probably wins 
eight to nine of them. That was a very talented team. I predicted NDSU to win in 2018 because it was too easy. 2019 because um, I just thought Trey Lance was a little bit of an edge over what James Madison was bringing. It worked out pretty pretty well. I picked SDSU in the spring, so I was off there. But my thing with North Dakota State overall is I'm not going to force a prediction for just because they're my team. Um, I picked South Dakota State to beat them this year in the Dakota marker. That's the only game I've picked against them all year, and it will continue to be the only game I pick against them. I think that the coaching staff of North Dakota State has a slight advantage in terms of being able to completely adjust and gel into what they're going to want to do against Montana State. And Montana State will be just a little restricted with the new quarterback to have to stick with stuff that's going to keep him comfortable. Of course, you're going to trust him with his legs, but what NDSU has lost in some size in their linebackers, they have picked up with athletic freakish speed, good in coverage and good against quarterbacks. So I think that's going to be a big edge. I think Tommy Touchdown may make one mistake, maybe two. Uh, Kyler, this sounds like a cop out, man, but I've had it the whole time. I am copying and pasting you. I'm going to go 27 17, and I'm also going to take North Dakota State. So, um, NDSU across the board. Jamie, any final thoughts there? Are you, are you going to give me some junk about the? Uh, <laughs> no, the I think we all. Paste? I think we all took 27 for uh, North Dakota State. I just gave Montana State another couple points. So, um, it must be that they're going to score 27. Yeah, should should be interesting. And if the Bobcats end up winning, uh, kudos to you guys. Uh, I will give praise no matter what. I really hope it's a clean, healthy game. I hope we have no injuries. Just like, let's just see the best team win. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, guys, we are heading down to Frisco, Texas. Jamie and I will be there on Thursday. Kyler coming up Friday. Chris Hammond, Tubbs at the club, the main man. He's going to be coming up with us as well. We are likely going to be doing some sort of live stream on Friday before the game, similar to what we did, a college game day style feel, if you will, like we did this spring season. Um, we will also be out about at the bars. We will be posting on social media. So make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be doing some live streams. That's where you guys can kind of track us, follow us and be like, oh, I want to go meet up with the admins. I'd love to give them a high five. Say hi to them. We're going to be tailgating with some awesome people at some awesome rigs. We'll let you guys know where we're at with that. Uh, we're in section 115 for the game, lower rows in the end zone there. Come say hi. Come say hello. So just make sure you're following us on the social media platforms. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe if you're listening to this on a podcast platform so you can stay in touch with us. We're in Frisco. We'd love to meet you guys face to face. That's the best part of the trip is besides us finally seeing each other after messaging each other nonstop for a whole year to actually get together and see each other in person is just seeing you fans as well. So uh, Kyler. Final thoughts, my man, before we roll out and prep for our travels. Yeah, so the best thing, or my final thought is, this whole playoff, I've picked Montana State to lose every game besides UT Martin. I said this other team's going to out-physical them. They're going to outclass them. It'll be close because Montana State is good. But every single game, I said Montana State was going to lose. Every single game, they've proven me wrong. I'm going to continue that trend again, again. I picked North Dakota State to win for a reason, because I want them to lose. So let's go, Montana State. Let's go, Bobcats. Yeah, as a Bison fan, I can tell you, if you're an FCS fan, you should not be cheering for NDSU. Only Grizz fans. Grizz fans, 100%. You should never cheer for your rival. I don't care what the circumstances are. Everybody else, you should never cheer for the Bison at this point. You should be so sick of them. It should be all about the Bobcats for the cheering and stuff. Uh, Jamie, final thoughts before we roll, my man. I'm just looking forward to getting down to Frisco and getting together with everybody and seeing a good football game. And like you said, hope everybody is healthy, no injuries, no COVID positive, keeping people out and let's have the best possible game. Um, let's have one as good as a spring finale. That'd be great. And it will be the last great attended postseason game. James Madison fans will ever be at. And then it's off to the bowl games, but Hey, tickets will be easy to come by. All right, guys, we are rolling out here for the FCS Fans Nation podcast. We will see you in Frisco, Texas. Cannot wait to hang out with you guys. Cannot wait to have a good time. Jamie, Kyler, I'll give you a big old hug. Um, it is going to be a big time battle, folks, between the Bobcats and the Bison. And holy moly, that's a lot of words that start with B. But yeah, I always save the, la the best one for last, ladies and gentlemen. See you in Frisco. Boom. Oh. Thank you for listening to the FCS Fans Nation podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe to this podcast on your preferred listening platform. 
whether it's Apple, Spotify, Google, or even YouTube. And make sure to follow our FCS Fans Nation social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for listening to the premier podcast for FCS football. Bo. That's yeah, true. Tyler or Tyler. Well, Tyler is, you know, Kyler's dead. Kyler <laughs> is still, is, is my name still on Tyler on the <laughs> chat?